Hey guys, this is James here from jamesegood.com and of course ebassguitar.com. How are you doing? Today I'm going to take you through a thing I call the 124 method. Okay, this is a method that I use um, to explore all the different shapes um, that I can play a riff in a major key from. Okay, so if we've got a riff in the key of C, it's looking at the choices that we can use and we can either work off a first finger, a second finger, or a fourth finger, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. The third finger doesn't work so well in this, um, uh, in this situation. So I always get my students to look at how do we play that going off a first finger, a second finger, or a fourth, okay? To demonstrate this concept, I'm gonna start with the second because that's kind of our, our home, shall we say. So we're gonna go up a major scale. So that major scale, We'll show you why I've started with the second finger because it's the most obvious one to start with. And we're going to take this rock and roll riff here. So we're going to go. So we're going to go. So to take that apart, okay, we're going to go to. Then we're going to go to an E flat to an E natural slide up. To the fifth, to the sixth, okay. And I'm trying to use one finger per fret uh, method here at all times. Okay, uh, I'm going to put this to a backing track in just a moment, but I'm going to show you the, the other two options that we've got first of all that um, are really good to practice. So we're going to do this coming off a of first finger next, okay? And we're going to shift forward, okay, so we can get the E flat with our second finger, and then E natural at 12th fret, okay, G, A there. So, and the next thing I do at this point is get is to listen to the difference between each one. There's a to slightly different flavour between. And. You'll notice that the strings sound fatter and mellower if you use this one here, and they're a bit more punchy, okay? If you use the one coming off your second finger, okay? Now, I'll do the one coming off the fourth finger, and this is the one that I see most people pay uh, not quite so much attention to because it um, requires um, a bigger stretch to it. But I'll show it to you uh, anyway, and it's a great one to practice. So, okay, and hammer on there between the second and the third. Okay, and then the first finger at fret five on the G to fret seven on the D string. Okay. And this is a great one because when we start moving around the blues, which we're going to try, we actually only have to shift our hand once when we're doing this, okay? When we're doing this one, for instance, we're kind of shifting all the time, okay? Which is fine if you want to do that, but it's just a, a different way of doing it, okay? So I'm going to go through some of the different options now with this blues backing, backing track. So don't forget, you can download this if you want to practice along uh, just by hitting the link below, uh, below this video. So let's go for it, okay? So we're going to start with the second finger option. Then up to the F. Now I'm going to move to the first finger option. to the fourth finger option. Up to the F. I'll sing a shift. Okay, 
So what I get you to do is look at the subtlety and the nuance of it once you've got it down and then you can make your musical choices which one you want to use. You might want to use this fatter and mellow one where you've got the hammer on there, okay? Okay. Um, or you might want to use this one where you're sliding, okay? Okay. Or you might want to use this one here where you're hammering on again, okay? But you're getting all the notes in one position and you don't have to move, move your hands so much, okay? Bigger stretch, but worth it. So what I would get you to do is to practice all of these three shapes in isolation and then do it one by one with each backing track where you're being rigorously disciplined to stick to one shape okay and move it around to the blues okay what i do is i often take these as a little game plan into a gig okay so for instance um i was on uh, a wedding i don't know a couple of weeks ago and they called johnny be good and that's a rock and roll in uh, thing in blue rock and roll blues um and you've got a quite a lot of choices of bass lines you can play with that so i chose something very similar to that but i thought i'm going to practice this one coming off a forefinger now uh, practice is the word here. Um, I never would ever encourage a student to go and practice their licks on a gig. So you're just trying to particularly practice something. You always want to go on a gig and play what you know and be musical. But I don't think there's anything wrong if you've got it down at home to go in there with a game plan and going, well, I'm going to practice this one particular idea. I'm going to focus on this. So to see how it feels on a gig. And then you start exploring all the different options when you're on that stage. I call this um, learning by limitation. If you limit your options, you start to really explore what's really in there and all the little subtle nuances which are, which are there. So that's the end of the lesson today. It, don't forget, you can download the backing track by hitting the link if you want to practice along to that. Okay, so practice coming off a second finger, um, a first finger, and a fourth finger when you're in a major key. We'll do another one in due course where we'll look at the options for uh, minor chords too. Uh, but this is a great way of starting to explore the tonal options that we've got on the neck, okay? Um, how things feel to our hands, okay? And all the little subtle kind of um, inflections that we can do articulations from sliding. So I've been James from jameseager.com. If you enjoyed this, please do like and share, um, and I'll see you next time. Cheers, bye-bye.